This is not going to be something that happens overnight. We can't cure everything as quickly as we would like. We've let them down over the last years. We're not winning at any level. We're losing. We've lost our dignity. I don't have to tell you guys, politics plays a big part in everything that happens here. And I will cut through that like a hot knife through butter. In 2019, Trinidad and Tobago football was at an all-time low. Knocked out of the CONCACAF Nations League, FIFA ranked at 102 and had a record of one win in 17 games. Things were not great. However, after a change in regime, former England international Terry Fennick was the man chosen to try to get the team out of this dark place. Today, we sit down with the man in charge of the monumental task of taking Trinidad and Tobago back to being a winning team again. Let's hear what he has to say. Hello everyone, this is Andrew Suglal of Extra Time TV and I'm joined today by someone who has been here before. Now, he has the title of the national coach, Trinidad Tobago. How are you today, Terry? I'm very good, thanks, Andrea. Lovely to be with you and Extra Time. Uh, enjoy it every time I come down here and do my interviews. It's always exciting stuff. All right, always a pleasure. You know, uh, first off, you know, congratulations on this appointment. We know you're very passionate about this game. Yeah. In fact, you have been here for about 20 years. 20 years, yeah. And in a lot of ways, Terry is a Trini, a Trinbegonian. Terry the Trini, eh? Terry the Trini. So with hashtag <laughs> that, you're going to have to, um, you know, put some patterns and protect that. But let's get straight into the questions, you know. Yeah. Trinidad Tobago, in recent years, it hasn't been, you know, great. Very few things to smile about. We had a very unenviable losing streak. We got knocked out of the CONCACAF Nations League. Yeah. Generally, it's been a mess. So, you know, you've been appointed. This is a monumental task for you. Yes. You know, there's probably not a worse time in a lot of ways to take over the national team. It's quite a challenge. How do you plan to approach this? Um, I know I've got to be tough from the start. I've got to make sure I bring in bigger and better talent. I'm looking overseas at, at kids that have got Trini parentage. Yeah. Um, that's because of all the things that you've just mentioned, Andrea. This is going back years. When I think I came down here in, in January 2000 uh, and the Pro League at that time was quite vibrant. Uh, there was a bit of money flowing in there, sponsors in there. Of course, we went to 2006 World Cup. So over that period of time with Jack Warner, football was going in the right direction. Um, unfortunately, the only nice thing I've seen since that period of time I thought Stephen Art done a very good job. I thought he managed things very well. He, he had a successful side, generally speaking, uh, over his tenure with the national team. But behind the scenes, I, I, you know, I don't think people realise out there that football has crashed. Yeah. You know, we've gone through a situation whereby the Pro League, um, Super League, they've been scrambling now for over 10 years. And scrambling, why? Because government have given up a subvention. That subvention has become paramount to the top 10 teams, the, the pro league sides, excluding army and police. And they've not allowed a promotion relegation within that period because they don't want to give up the, the subvention. So you've got the same usual suspects running football and in amongst themselves, appointing themselves marketing managers, chairmen, this and that, and none of them have got any acumen in business. Now that's why football in Trinidad and Tobago has gone right down the chute. Yeah. And we've got to shake it up. And I think this period of time, you're quite right, I don't think it could have gone much lower than it is at the moment. Yeah. Teams at every level of national football losing, men's and women's being neglected, not enough training sessions, teams thrown into competitions without the right preparation. It's all going the wrong way because the people behind the scenes have not, don't know the business of football and they're looking after themselves, their friends, and they're not bringing the right people in yeah. to make a difference for the, for the youngsters that we've got. Yeah, it's, it's a very, it's, I don't have to even speak about it, it's well documented, the problem. Yeah. We've had fans of the game, you could see it at the stadiums. Yeah. You know, the CONCACAF Nations League, you know, me and my crew went there. 
there was a handful of people there before yeah. even it was a friendly the stadium was going to be filled yes you know the fans are speaking by not but, attending but, but i think andrea this is part of the trinidad and tobago culture where the brits will face it off and get some sort of answer somewhere down there Trinies have sat still, let it go, haven't gone there, haven't questioned the people behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and they've just watched it go so far down yeah. that it's now a scramble to get it right. Yeah. I'm not like that. You know, I get on great with most. The people I don't get on with, I don't get on with. Yeah. Simple as. But I move on. You know, that's, that's life. But the football fraternity, the football fans out there, from that passion that I saw in the early stages and them early 2000s to now it's such a diff such a contrast yeah. because they've just lost all interest in the game yeah. and that's not because of the quality of the players that's the quality of the people behind the scenes that don't know the business of the game it's really a, as i said an uphill task for you yeah uh, but you know moving along uh, you've been here as i said for 20 years you've had success a club and an original level for yep. Trinidad to be very good. Even a lot of people are saying that Terry Fennick is one of the best coaches in the Caribbean. You've had success at Central FC, Jablote, both domestically and regionally. So you have lots of knowledge on the players. You worked with certain players before. And I think the if, if you would allow me, yeah. listen, won the Pro League, went at, you know three times with Jablote, I went to Central FC. And it wasn't if, it was a matter of time before I put my squad together, before we come strong. Yeah. We win the league and then they, then Central win the league three years, spinning yeah. on the same squad. But that's not really my success. What I would like to say to the people out there is the time, the period, the 20 years that I've been here, 87-ish footballers have got professional contracts outside of Trinidad and Tobago mm. coming through my development and 69 footballers have got um, scholarships in the United States because of my development. That's the real success here. You know, let's look at the Pro League and look what it is. It's nothing more than a development league. Yeah. That's why when I've had my fallouts in the past with David John Williams and W Connection, my fallouts have been, hang on a second, I'm playing in the cup final against W Connection and they've got seven, eight, nine foreigners in that team and my Jablete are 100% Trinidadian yeah. because I care for where we're bringing the kids from. It's a development league and nothing's changed. No. 20 years later I'm still seeing the same things. I'm looking at the Pro League today with the same big foreign contingent at certain clubs yeah. and they're expecting government to fork out the people's money, taxpayers money to sponsor young players from Brazil and Colombia and this and that, that are not even in, within our CONCACAF region. That's wrong. So I think this development league that we've got and the Super Leagues below, I know the TTF here, we've got, um, we've got three new leagues coming later this year that we're trying to establish over a longer period of time. So that'll be seven, eight, nine months of the year football for the youngsters instead of a scramble. The Pro League, three to four months maximum. I mean, my God, I'm listening to stories that they're trying to play three games a week at the moment, the Pro League, to get through a month quickly so they don't have to pay the players for the next month. That's wrong. These kids are looking at football as a way forward. It's a huge sport across the globe, the biggest sport on the planet. And these guys want to make a name for themselves here to get outside to, so they can bring themselves and their families some money, earn a living, do the right things. Yeah. And we've got the administrations here letting them down. And, you know, just to build on that, you know, a lot of youth players uh, who spoke to me, you know, under the condition of being anonymous, they complain about that. They said it's just too much football. Correct. Uh, you know, like uh, they, they have opportunities, but there's so many games. Yeah. So many games they're trying to get themselves to market themselves, uh, you know, trying to get themselves into universities. Yeah. Um, some of them even admitted it felt like if they were being used in a lot of ways. Yep. And, you know, this is an issue that is harming us physically. Yep. Because when our national team players get there, as you know, Absolutely. they're physically not prepared. So, you know, those leagues, I'm guessing, and, it, about. and it's not just that. You see, yeah. the physical side of it obviously is very, you know, we're weak as far as that's concerned. We're not fit enough when we're going to competitions. 
we get knocked over we're not using the gyms as much as we should do we're not having the guys out with you know doing their bleep tests and making sure that what their fitness level is and we throw them into competitions expecting them to win and and it's the mentality thing behind the scenes the psychological effect that has on players when they're getting battered in games yeah. and they're looking at the coaches and what happened there and the coaches don't know the players don't know because there's not enough time and effort going in the background to make sure we're on the right level with the right programs to develop these youngsters in the right manner so when we get out there we don't just compete we get out there and win and the thing is this is an area that uh, a lot of people don't speak enough about people look at the final product on the field yeah uh, they just look at the game look at the score line and they draw conclusions so this is why you know discussions like this it's very important for the footballing public because you know I used to be one you know you're a consumer yeah. you look at the game you just look at the score line and yeah I, I call it the FIFA mentality the video game yes where you just swap all players you know it's not as simple as 11 guys on the field yeah it starts with the professional league of course with the you know the development of the players physically mentally yeah. and we, we haven't had that yeah so you know these are things that it's good for the fans to hear and Andre listen it's right that we bring these things out because yeah. people should be held accountable absolutely but the next step is how we move away and move on from that. Listen, at the end of the day, there's some wonderful talent on the ground in Trinidad and Tobago, yeah. men's and women's. We've got some wonderful young players out there. How do we fast track to giving them good programs, good development programs, nutrition, how do we help in that respect? Behind the scenes right now, and it's, it's things that we've not been able to come out with too early, one step at a time, We've got to identify the problems that we had in the past. We've got to deal with the problems. People have to be held accountable so we know where we're moving. Yeah. And then from there, we've then got to start working with corporates, working with international partners so we can learn from them and start giving our youngsters here the best possible chance. Listen, we've fallen out of the top six, yeah. the Hex in CONCACAF. We've got teams like Canada that we, we've got um, next month. We've got teams like that coming up that have had three and four years development and doing good things. Yeah. And they're recognising the way where football's going to there. And, you know, we are, Trinidad and Tobago, my God, when I arrived there in 2000, we used to batter teams like Panama, Honduras, Costa Rica. We'd give them a shake-up. Not anymore, because they've had these five and six years development and now they've got a spine of their team, which is experience. They've got the outside of their side that is vibrant young players, 17, 18 through to 23. And they're running the socks off the, the, the level of their footballs miles ahead of us. Yep. That's because the people behind the scenes, the administrators here, do not know football. Yep. Wake up, smell the coffee, get a grip, have a look what's happening around the world, go and see things, go and ask people. Go and learn from others and let's get things back on track. There's no, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. The knowledge is out there. Right. Absolutely. And you know when knowledge is available to everyone, it's inexcusable. Yes. When someone says they don't. Of know. course. Unacceptable. So, you know, like uh, moving along to the, uh, the sporting aspect. Yeah. I mean, uh, the on field perspective, because if we, the, the developmental aspect, we'll get back to that. Yeah. You know, you, you've been here for a long time, as I said before. You have a vast knowledge of the local players. Yeah. As we said again, you have an uphill task because you now have to construct a team yeah. and get results in what I consider a short period of time. So, you know, is there a particular style of play without giving too much away because you don't want to give away your tactics, <laughs> yeah. you know, that you, know, you would like to see from Trinidad Tobago? Andre, I think first and foremost, what I've got to say, the, the, the last style of football that we had under Dennis Lawrence didn't, wasn't right, wasn't good for that. It wasn't, you know, you, you look at the statistics, they stand out a mile, that wasn't right, it wasn't comfortable for the players. I'm bringing lots of other players in from the UK and North America, MLS. Some of these guys are contracted in the UK with Premier League teams and loaned out to Championship and Division One sides. So they're coming from backgrounds that they're playing a style of football. I've got to get them playing with our locally based players, with the players that we've got, the top quality players, and we have, we've got some excellent players. I've got to fuse them together into a style of football that suits us. Now already, I'm going to tell you, we need results. We've got to get back off the, off the ground. And that will not be from necessarily playing from the goalkeeper at the back. Oh, mistake, we've lost another goal again. 
That will not happen under me. Yep. We will be more direct. It will be structured. It will be organised. It will be organised when we've not got the ball, absolutely. We will be tight. Our distances will be short. Yeah. We'll be nice and compact. We'll show people inside instead of outside, what I've seen in the past there. And from there, we will be more organised when we've got the ball. So the guys know what we're looking to achieve when we've got the ball. And that is run. So when that ball arrives in a certain position, other guys around the field are already making their movements. So the next flow of the play is already in their minds. That is time and energy on the training ground, persistently going over the same routines to make sure when the ball arrives in this position with this player, everybody else on the team knows their movements so we can keep possession of the ball and be effective. It's about being effective at this time. We've got to start winning games. Once we get over that hill and we start getting a few results, Andrea, yeah. I'll be able to sit down and go through and see the better players that we've got and structure things so we can see the better side of their game. Mm. At the moment, it's about results. Yeah. And we've got uh, Gold Cup qualifiers coming up in June. Mm. That'll either be Barbados that are training on a daily basis. Yep. And they've been doing that for the last months. We, a lot we, of people don't know. We are not. Um, or it could be Guyana that have had a, a, a British coach. Now they've got a Brazilian and they've got some good players playing outside, the same as Trinidad and Tobago. So it's not going to be easy. And it's not going to be easy, Andre, because our team's been losing. The confidence level is at rock bottom. Some players in the, over the last months have not wanted to come back and play for the national team of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, I've got to get that pride, that passion, that wanting to do well for your country. I've got to bring that back into the team. Now, it will not be easy. And the ones that are soft and want to give in, I don't want them back. I want people that, when they put that shirt on, that red, white and black, yeah. that, that means something. The same way as it did for me when I played for England. Yeah. The same pride that I've got for this country now that I've lived here for so long. When we go out there, we're not, going, we're not playing friendlies. Every game is war. We're going to win. We'll get our knocks on the chin. Of course we will. But in the long term, we will come through that and we'll start generating and bringing players through that have got the same heart and passion commitment yeah. to make sure all of our teams are more than competitive. That's the way forward for us. Yep. Do you think from a psychological perspective, as a, as a coach who has been in the Pro League, you've done analysis on, on TV as well. Yep. Um, a psychological aspect or component is an area that a lot of people don't pay attention to in sports in general in Trinidad. We are only now starting to scratch this. We don't, we don't take it serious at all. Yeah, and yeah. This is a, a factor that we don't speak about in these discussions, you know. This is another challenge you have to face. Yeah. You have to know, as a coach, because coaches are motivators now. Yeah. They have to be very savvy with psychological Of course. Tactics. It's 70% of the job now yeah. is how you operate with your players. So, my early stages is about bonding with my players. Yeah, there's got to be discipline, organisation, all of that, which comes with me anyway. But I've got to get on to get the best out of them. Now, when you look at what, what we've got here, listen, we're in CONCACAF. So we've top teams, USA, Mexico, Costa Rica, you've got them sides that you're up against. Yeah. We need to change formations, change style of play, high up the field, deep in the field, depend on who we're against to get the results that we need. Listen. If we play in Mexico, I'm not going to sit there and say, listen, guys, they're better than us. We're going to get beat here. We'll concentrate on the next game. No. I'll be sitting down with my players. I'll be on the training ground. Then I'll sit down with them. This is how we're going to undo them. Yep. They might be better on paper. They might have all these top stars. But this is how we're going to stop them. Yeah. And now we're going to force our initiative onto them. That's the way football operates today. Yeah. Coaches have got to be alive to what's going on. They've got to know all about the opposition, so it's not just about our team, it's about who we're playing against. Yeah. There'll be sides that we expect to win against, that I might play different players that have more ability on the ball, that are comfortable on the ball, because I know we're going to get lots of possession. But at the end of the day, it's all about them results, Andrea. Yeah. Football, regardless of what the last administration said, or oh, it's about development, no, it's not. It's about winning games, making sure the public at large are enjoying what they're seeing, seeing some success, so they come out and support. Yeah. Corporate Trinidad come on side because they're seeing 
and improvement, things moving forward. Yeah. So we do this together. Parents in this country look after their kids better than anywhere else in the world. Why I say that is, you've got kids, youngsters, teenagers, 20 year old, into your 30s, living with families with your parents, yeah. right through that, because they get on great. Yeah. So the love that you guys have got, Trinidadians, for your kids is brilliant. Yeah. It's now moving that, so then that support from communities, families, for your kids playing football, bring it out to something that's successful. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something unique to the Caribbean, specifically to Anatomy. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I guess that's why it's been here for 20 years. Yeah. It's so from a developmental perspective. Yeah. Um, you know, all successful nations, you know, the Germanys, the Argentinas, and so on. Is, uh, yeah. Argentina and Germany, in yeah. particular, they had a very successful uh, youth development program. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're they are in a bit of a dip now, but they're on the rise. Yeah. But one of the successful... Because they changed the coach. Yeah. That's what they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Usually, and I did a project on this in my final year in university, very thorough understanding of how they do things. All the successful, all these successful countries have a streamlined developmental system yeah. from youth level to senior level. Yeah. Um, we've heard about this many times from previous coaches, um, you know, youth level, you know, under 17, under 20, and usually the products head into the national team. Yes. There's a new regime now. Uh, obviously, as a national coach, you have to look at the big picture, yep. which is what often people don't realize that you have to do. Is it currently in the process or is it streamlined the process from youth level to senior? Or? Not at all. I mean, yeah. when you look at where we are, mm. Andrea, what we've got is we've got the college leagues mm. operating alone yeah. and apart. Yeah. You've got the Super League working alone and apart. You've got the Pro League pulled away because they're getting subventions yeah. so they pull away and work apart we've got to bring these together for the for the best for the kids what we're doing is again we're getting caught up in administrators and administrations that are looking out for themselves yeah. they're a few dollars they eat a food mentality which i don't agree with at all yeah. and they forget the kids yeah. we the new ttfa administration have got to work on bringing these things together because on a little island like Trinidad and Tobago, we've got to make sure we're doing the best for the youngsters by having a, um, a program that works for everybody, that brings the best out of everybody, that everybody can see the successes of it and feel a part of something that's moving forward. If we're fighting each other down for small dollars, yeah. we're wasting our time. We've got to bring it together. Colleges, Super League, Pro League, to merge with programs with the, with the TTF here and make it successful for the, for the kids of this country. Yep, you know, uh, this is something that, you know, a lot of people have been saying before, but each time, you know, it, it keeps the plans keep getting scrapped and so on. It's, it's, ridiculous. it's a bit ridiculous, to yeah, be honest. it is. Um, you know, in terms of uh, expectations of fans, you know, football fans are passionate. Yeah. They are out of control. I'm one of them. I saw your celebration when Tottenham did well last yes. year. Yes. Yeah. Loved it. Because that's what... That's what makes the game beautiful. Absolutely. And what it. Um, oftentimes, you know, the expectations of a fan and fans, you know, and, and justifiably so, because, you know, they just have to sit on their couches and look at it. You know, you are now the coach, as I yeah. we know this. There are a lot of people are expecting immediate changes. Now that we've elaborated on some of the things that are taking place, yeah. you know, they don't realize that sometimes to make these changes, it takes time. In your estimation, how long do you think it would take? Listen, I'm not going to rush in, yeah. Andrea, and mess it up. Yeah. This has got to be, because of where we are, it's got to be a methodical, slow, one step at a time to get to where we want to be. Yeah. So we might have a little knock on the chin here and there, but we'll yeah. not fall back too far. As long as we keep the programme going, we'll keep on accelerating, getting closer to our goals. Yeah. Listen, 2006 World Cup... I'm, I, I'm now going back to November uh, 2005 yeah. when we qualified in Bahrain. It was the best period of time that I ever had in Trinidad and Tobago because the whole country were on side. UNC, PNM, they were cuddling each other up in the streets, in the stadiums, and everything. It was brilliant. Every car had a national flag on it. Everybody came together. That was like my paws are raising here. That was me looking at this country and thinking, wow, look what we can do. Yeah. And after World Cup, after all the promises, 
it went the other way and the wrong people got in at the wrong time with their wrong agendas. Yeah. We've got to try and change that. Then. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's unfortunately been a downhill, you know, slide for us. We had a little up moment with Stephen Hart. Yeah. I, it, it's very difficult to disagree You see, that. like yourself, listen, yeah. Argentinian fan, Trinis support their Premier League teams, their yeah. Champions League teams, and deep down they love their national sides. But they've had nothing to cheer about over the last years. They've got, they, the stadiums have been empty yeah. because they'd rather not go than go and get upset and be embarrassed. And that's what it's been like. Listen, my job at the moment is about bringing a bit of pride back into our games, our players, our t teams. So we feel good about them. And if we feel good about them, we'll be able to take them little knocks on the chin every now and again because yeah. we're together on it. At the moment, there's a big divide. Yeah. Players are nowhere near. Our fans don't know who our players are at the yeah. moment. So I've got to mend that. I've got to bring them together. So we're fighting on the same page, battling hard to get the same results and, and get the, the fans to come back with the corporates, get us moving in the right direction. Get people back in the stadium. Correct. On to the, like, uh, the immediate objectives you have. We yeah. spoke about the... Uh, yeah, we have a friendly that was announced by the TTFA against Canada. Yeah. And also that is preparation for the possible matchup between Guyana and also... Barbados. I mean Barbados. And then play Guyana as well. Yeah. Barbados is coached by Latin. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, how is the preparation going for that so far? It's good. Listen, people are asking, when's Terry going to do his first training session? Yeah. All of my players are overseas. Yeah. And at the moment, pro league games going on. Yeah. I'm getting out there. I'm looking at the games. I'm looking at the young talent that's around. I've seen one or two experienced players that might be useful. Um, I'm keeping the noise down. I'm not telling anybody anything. That that is strictly me and one or two of the persons behind the scenes that we're working. So I don't let anything out. Yeah. You'll recognise at the TTFA that everything hits the press, hits the media yeah. before it's time. Mm -hmm. Not with me. I'm keeping it very quiet. Um, and I'm doing that for a reason. I think it's important. I've got to get it right, Andre. Yeah. And I'm not having people push me in the background and try to push me into, when's your first training session? When are we starting? And 2026, 2026 is actually for 2026. Yeah. I've got six years to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm not in a rush to do anything and fail. Mm. I want to be methodical and get things right. I want to make sure the players that I select are the right people for the right team. And sometimes that will rough a few people up. Good, that's what they need. When they arrive back in Trinidad and Tobago, it's not party time. When they arrive back, my people will be on the ground. I know everybody in every bar and everywhere you go, and they will be ringing me. So when they see you, when I get that call, I'm in the car on the way to find you. So don't go there. So we've got disciplines that we've got. Listen, the, the public at large have fallen out with a number of administrations and players because of things that have gone on. The usual boat trip, not happen again. And staff, if you're caught at it as well, see you later, don't come on Monday. We've got to start getting that discipline back in what we're trying to do. Yeah. Football now is not a corner shop business. It's a global conglomerate. It's huge. So that's treated with a bit of respect and that's treated seriously and get our kids looking at it that way as well. So it's not, we're not that holiday island where they're coming back from their European or North American clubs to have a party. Nah, it's not happening with me. It's definitely well documented cases of that. You know, um, often it's misunderstood. It seems like I'm saying this a lot. Club football, international football. Yeah. Clubs, you get to work with your players every day, all yes. the time. You know this. Yeah. At international level, you have an international break. You only have a couple of days. And oftentimes, you know, as fans, you know, I, I mingle with them. I'm one of them. People tend to, you know, they, you know, coaches, they, everybody loves the game, college coaches or whatever you want to call them. Um, they don't understand that you don't have much time as a national coach. Correct. You only have a small window to see these guys because you see people saying all these, you know, he should use this tactic. He should have used this player. Why didn't he try this formation? Yeah. And they don't realize that. While you have your ideas, the players are spread all over the planet. Yep. The challenge of getting to implement those ideas in just a couple of days is something that only an international coach would understand. Correct. Um, you know, obviously, as we, you know, you are in this for the first time now. Andre, my, my second 
time with these players. We've got eight, eight days in Canada. Yeah. My second time with them is competitive games. That's yeah. qualification. So I've have not got, got a lot of time this? at all. Yeah. So these guys have got full-time jobs with clubs, MLS, USL, UK, different leagues over there, where they've got a full-time job employment. Yeah. I get them for days. Now, over them days, I've got to find out as much as I can about them. So we'll have two sessions a day. Yeah. So that'll be morning and afternoon. So I'm looking at and getting things across to them. Because they're playing in, in solid leagues, their fitness levels, I'm assuming, will be good. Yeah. They will be tested. Of course they will, but I'm assuming they will be good. So we can get straight into the tactical side of it. Again, I've got to get results for the Gold Cup. Yeah. But... As we speak, I'm speaking to guys on the phone, on Skype, on WhatsApp. I'm bringing these guys together. Yeah. I've got a WhatsApp group. We're yeah. play people I've not even met yet. Yeah. I've not met them, but we're now getting on great yeah. on WhatsApp. And yeah, coach this and there. And I'm sure sharing a few funnies and a few stories and a few videos. And we're getting on good. But yeah. we still haven't met. Yeah. But this is me bonding with my players before they arrive. So I can shortcut through that into training sessions so we can get down to the bones of the matter mm -hmm. to make sure them seven or eight days are productive. Yeah. I've got to come out of that knowing who my better players are, knowing the best style of football for the guys that I've got yeah. to make sure I get results coming out of that. It's, it's, like I said, full time, it's an uphill task. Tough. But it seems like you're up, up, to it, up for it. I'm, go I'm not going to be easy. Yeah. But you know, Terry, Terry faced Diego Maradona, so. <laughs> He can handle anything. He, he ruined my career in 90 minutes that day. <laughs> Which is something we'll talk about soon. But, um, you know, we have a lot of young outstanding players. Yes. Um, I'll just name a few off the top of my head. You know, Tyrell Emmanuel, Judah Garcia, Mark Rambin, who won a whole bunch yep. of awards. Yeah. Justin Sarus and many others. Yeah. Um, we touched on it before, but, you know, as a national coach, you are observing all these guys. These guys play at a high school level for just a couple of weeks. They obviously have talent. We spoke about development before. But there is a significant gap. I spoke about this with Stephen Hart and other coaches where, you know, from a physical and physical perspective, these guys are playing at high school level. Some of the kids are smaller. And then the transition from high school to professional football is where some of them get lost in the cracks. Some of them maybe make it through. And some players don't develop like they should. Yeah. Um, what do you think now, uh, now that you're a part of the setup now, the main part, that... You, that needs to be done to solve that problem. I think it's important, unless the governing bodies come together, yeah. I think it's an impossible task. Yeah. The gulf between schoolboy football and professional football, now recognise our pro league here in Trinidad and Tobago yeah. is nowhere near pro leagues anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Fact. So the gulf is too far for these guys. Listen, success in my mind for these youngsters, yes, we've got some wonderful talent. The college league, they're operating with players 18, 19, and 20, too old. Yeah, too old. So by the time they're still playing in college league at 19, 20, they've lost four and five years development with professional clubs somewhere else in the world. Yeah. If they're good enough, send them. Yeah. Parents, look after your kids, and I know you do, but send them out on scholarships. Get them out of this country. Get them playing in top leagues where they're... Well, listen, everywhere in the world now, every football league in the world, as well as your football, yeah. that's what they're good at, you've got to work on your academic. You've got to go to school. If you're not academic, you've got to do your plumber, carpenter. You've got to learn a trade. Yeah. Get them out. That's what these guys are good at. Let them go. Let them have a go at their football yeah. and see if they can make a living elsewhere. Because football here is not nearly of the standard that's required for me, for players in the national team to win. We're, we're not in the top six of CONCACAF anymore. And we look like we're going that direction rather than that. For that to change, I need to know these guys that are leaving here, going on scholarships, so I can tab them, keep in touch with them, keep on top of them. I've got guys now in Argentina that I'm speaking to their coaches. I'm getting a report once a month from them, things that haven't been done before. And I'm working with them. How are you feeling? How's your confidence? Have you been playing well? Be honest. Yeah. Tell me because my, your coach will tell me the truth. Yeah. And the, it's, the report has been fantastic. But that's one thing because I've not got it on the ground here. Mm -hmm. You know, when we've got the Pro League forcing three games a week, 
to shorten the league because they have, don't want to pay their salaries. Yeah. That's detrimental to the kids that we got. No time to recover, can't prepare for the next game. They're just thrown in, let's get the games done. Who wins? Yep. Nobody. And the thing is, even as we speak, players, I guess they see AXTV as a reference point, they reach out to me because I worked in football before for a little while. Yeah. So I, I, I know a lot of these guys. And these guys don't know what to do. No. They are not getting the right information they need. Yeah. So they, they're glorified at high school level, which is a bit of a distraction. Correct. And then when they have to go to the next stage of their career, these guys are outstanding. Some of them even played for the national team at, at some point. Yeah. But it's simply just don't know what to do. Like no. they are even asking me. And you know, it's, 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 it's kind of sad because they, these kids are getting lost in the system. Well, Andrea, I'd, I'd like to reach out, not to the kids, to their parents. If you've got a good son out there, or young lady, that are doing great things on the football field, come and speak to me. Come and have a chat. You can go through, Andrea. Come and see me, and I will give you good, solid advice as to what your next steps are and should be. And that might not necessarily be here in Trinidad. That might be outside. Yeah. Because the kids deserve it. Yep, you know, like this guy, Angeron from Argentina. Yep. And he's at Banfield, which we did a video on that, so you can check that out. Yeah. I'll put a link below. Um, Michelle Yannick, a kid from Trinidad, yeah. he's out there right now, he's doing good things. We're on the phone two or three times a week. See, the, the, the country doesn't know about this. They really don't know. Yeah, when but, a there goes in. but these guys are outside and they're working all day. Then when they finish their physical side of football, they're then doing their schoolwork to keep up the speed. That's the way the world's moving, that's yeah. development. And this is why we have these conversations, because we could have a generic quick video where it's, you know, we just talk a bunch of nonsense. A lot of knowledge is required. Yeah. We have a passionate fan base. Correct. And they often only see, they only, to their defense, they only know what is being shown to them. And you know, conversations like this, you being the national coach, we have an avenue now to educate these people. Yeah. So now when they speak, they speak from a place from yes. knowledge. Because usually, you know, I, I, I hang with the fan base. You know, they say things like, you know, they're not doing anything. A lot of people assume that the team is training every day. Yeah. Little things that, you know, we're clearing up now. Yeah. And it's good for people to hear these things. And the players as well, you players out there who look at, you know, you got the message from the man himself. You know, this is what you need to do. Absolutely. You know, and, Let's um, help. It's, it's, this is very important. See, this is the difference between a Brit and the culture in Trinidad. I want to help. Yeah. I want to get your kids, if they're good enough, let's see where we can get them somewhere else. So everyone benefits. You've got some of the culture here is derogatory. You're knocking people down. I remember six weeks into my appearance here in Trinidad, mm. back in 2000, I was told about crabs in a barrel. Forget the crabs in a barrel. There's no room in the world for that today. Yep. We've got to help each other to get to the next level. It's, that's, listen, this is it's something that has plagued us as a nation as a whole. Yep. But this is where change takes place, you know, and this is why this leads to my you know, final question in a lot of ways. The response to your appointment has been very positive. Yeah. Um, I look at social media all the time. There's no hiding that at all. Yeah. Of course, there'll always be the one or two detractors. You'll get that in any sport anywhere on the planet. A lot of people have vocally expressed their support and they're very pleased with your appointment. Yeah. You know, what is your response to that, to, you know, the fans? Well, I, I think, listen, it's been, Andre, it's been overwhelming. Everywhere, whether I'm in the shopping mall, or I'm on the street, I'm at the beach with my daughter. Yeah. I've got people coming out of nowhere. Hey, Terry, I'm so pleased, shaking my hand. I'm so pleased you got the job and we're all looking forward to the changes yeah. because they care. Yeah. They want change. They've had enough of the rubbish that's gone on over the last years. Now, with that, listen, I don't want to let anybody down, but there's got to be significant change yeah. to go and get the game back on track to where it belongs. And these fans, these families, these communities, they've got good footballers in there. They've got to work on these kids. Yeah. They've got to make sure they're pushing them in the right areas. And they've got to stay far from the naughtiness, the nastiness, mm -hmm. that some things in and around football attract. Yeah. There are good, there's some good guys out there. Stick with the right people and let's see where we can move the game to. Yeah, and just to end things off, this was part of my original questions, but just to build on everything we said, the expectations of the fans now that you know we've gone into detail about these things yeah do you think now that with the knowledge the expectations of the fans will be a little more realistic now i think it will be because they've seen listen i've not been in the pro league for five years yeah but everybody knows my football factory foundation we're not just 
developing young kids from ages of three upwards. But we're now, we've got um, the college in Sunderland in the UK offering us scholarships for kids coming through 15, 16 age groups, so it's a lot younger than the 18, 19, 20 in the college league here. So they know I'm doing good things for their kids yeah. and they can come and speak to me. Listen, sometimes it might not be what you want to hear, yeah. but it's honest yeah. and, it, and it's where we are. Yeah. So I'm happy to help. I pick the phone up to everybody and anybody. I'm happy and I'll tell you if it's rubbish. Nah, don't waste my time. Yeah. That's the wrong way to go about it. But there's good people here. There's great footballers here. I'll do whatever I can. And I think that's what the fans out there have seen over the last years. They've seen me do that at grassroots. Yeah. Now they think, well, give the fella a chance at the national level because of the way the opposition have gone yeah. over the years. So you heard it folks, folks from the man himself. If you have any questions or you want to get in contact with Terry concerning sporting yeah. interests, I'll put the information in the description below. You can get the information there and we can, we can make it happen and you'll get valid, authentic information about how to move forward in your career or just sporting questions yeah. for guys who'd like to pursue or and girls their career in football. So Terry, you know, it's been a pleasure. We wanted that. We, I would love to have this discussion for hours. Yeah. We'll definitely have more in future, but it's always a pleasure and good luck the upcoming adventure. Thank you very much, Andre. All Top right. class. Just a reminder, everyone, for more episodes, be sure to head over to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more updates, interviews, and content.